I don't know if anyone can hear this. I don't know if anyone cares. This is Independent Librarian Dynamic, Sean Kennedy the Sixth. This is a broadcast so that you and yesterday can stop tomorrow from happening. This is a broadcast so that the beginning can change to stop the end. Broadcasting from some time after now. I can't give you an exact time of this broadcast because, well, all of time has been copywritten. Lots of arguments about what year it is, and so at the risk of giving up false data, I'll give no data instead and just let you know what I know to be fact. If you're listening to this, you could lose your listener's license. If you're afraid of being persecuted for what you think, you should probably turn that off now. But if you want to stick around and listen to what I gotta say, light your candles. You may serve or protect us all. Memories. I wish I could remember it all, because then I could tell you about it. What I do remember. About the plague. The burning. One thing I didn't tell you about was my wife. I was married. I'm ashamed to tell you I don't remember her name. I think I lost that on a genetic rescan. I just I tried to hold on to the name, but it slipped away. She was beautiful, I know that much. She was. She had long hair, laughing eyes. I see her sometimes in my dreams when I'm unlucky. Because I wake up and she's gone. It's lucky when I don't dream. When the plagues hit, there's paranoia everywhere. People didn't know what the plague was. They, they knew it wasn't the fallout. The more sensitive people, well, I died first. Old warhawks like me, well. We stuck around for a while. Our genetically sick sense of humor, I guess. But she died. So many other people died. Hysteria was mounting, nobody knew what was causing it. You've never seen hysteria until you see people afraid of bioweapons and plague. Kill their own children. Some people did. Everything I had was destroyed. We didn't know what the plague could land on. Some people had plague, sometimes they burned the whole house. Strange, thug-like groups trying to keep their neighborhoods pure. At that time, I was scared too. I didn't know what was going on, so... They had these burn pits set up. This is long before the burn booths went in. The burn booths didn't go in for years after that. The burn pits got set up. You dig a big hole, you know, and then stack the bodies in there. And then they burn them, and all their clothes and everything. Families, people who were left, they sat back and edges of this hole and just watched their relatives burn. I wish I could forget the time. I 
burn my wife. She was so thin after the plague had got through with her. It was like I was carrying a skeleton. her in sheets and carried her. Took her down to the pits where the burn was going to happen. Everyone was crying. The smell of accelerants, gasoline, kerosene, everything was everywhere. The smell was just sickening. There's people carrying children, babies, and It's like this huge wailing sea of people surrounding this pit, pink flash. I didn't feel right about burning her, but I'd lost just about everything. I'd sold almost everything off in order to try to survive. The wedding ring was gone, all the jewelry was gone, all the valuables were gone. The only thing that meant anything to me was my wife, and she was gone too. I wasn't even going to be able to keep anything from her. And I got an idea. I found a corner of the burn pile where they were stacking the bodies where there was only children. And later on the pile, I walked back and I watched that spot. There was only a few children there. And they walked around and doused the pile. They got us all back because they had to burn it. The whole time, I got as far back, but I counted my paces and focused on the exact spot where she was and they lit it on fire burning human flesh smells a lot like pork you can always tell people who've been at the burn piles they just stopped eating a lot of meat smoke searing heat even at the distance we were at, it was unbelievable. Most people turned and walked away, they couldn't bear it. I stayed. The smoke and the ashes falling, I stayed. Eventually the fire burned out. I don't remember how long I stayed there for, but it was a long time. There was only the crews that were going to start filling it in, but... I made my way down to where I knew she was. There was nothing left. There was only the ashes. And by the time I got down into the pit, there was people who saw me and they started to yell. The workers didn't want to go in after me. I didn't have much time. I went to the spot where my wife was and I started sifting through the ashes. I was looking for her teeth. Because with so many children, it'd be easy to tell her teeth apart from theirs found some. They were the only adult teeth there. I kept them in my pocket. I was so dirty by the time the work crews got to me, they dragged me away and I was screaming and crying. Ash. My fingers and hands. All over my clothes and my hair. I was this... We were all these gray... vultures burying the dead. I didn't have time to sort through them then. I just grabbed all the little rocks. These feel like little rocks. I felt bad about throwing away the children's teeth. Like they had a lot of life out of them and they were just gone. Snuffed out by the plague. But I found some of my wife's teeth. I had a little bag for them and I kept it with me. I have it right now. That's all that's left. And that and those scarring nightmares I have. And then I have to wake up to this.
What do you say to ghosts who died before you were born? What do you say to people you've never met? What do you say to people who have the only chance of saving you? Maybe preventing you from existing? This is Independent Librarian Dynamic, Sean Kennedy the Sixth. Broadcasting sometime after now. At an unknown grid. Please help me. <laughs> 